Hey guys, it's Malcolm here once again, and today I want to show you and talk to you about how to build around Voidforge and give you my humble attempt at just basically spinning to win with the sword. Now, Voidforge is a weapon that comes from Uber Elder, so the hardest piece of content in the game currently. It's a two-hander, and it is pretty much the polar opposite of a Starforge. A Starforge is a lot of heavy physical damage, and then it cannot deal any elemental, but it can also do chaos, while a Void Forge is based off of a little bit of physical to start with and converted completely to a lot of elemental damage, but it cannot deal any physical or any chaos, or rather it says cannot deal any non-elemental damage. So it means you can only deal elemental damage and it all comes from the conversion of of, off of your physical damage. So it acts as what a Doom Fletch has for uh, ranged characters for the past few leagues as a melee weapon now. So you stack lots and lots of physical or as much as you can and you base all of your damage off of physical. You then convert whatever you're going to hit into elemental, 300% larger hits of a random element, and then scale through elemental damage as well. So the sky is the ceiling as to how well you can scale that weapon, like Doom Fletch in the past, because you can get a lot of flat physical, you can get a lot of physical on the tree, and then you can also get a lot of elemental percent into your um, damage scaling, and that means that gear can get pretty expensive and your damage can get pretty absurd. Now, I did not have one drop because I've only killed Uber Elder, uh once and haven't really had the currency to have a go at it again, but I did have have 200 chaos lying around to uh, manage to buy the weapon back when it was 200c, got it six linked and decided I would try a cyclone build with it because it's been quite a while since I've played my last cyclone which I think would have been Starforge or something like that and uh, it was definitely time to get a bit of spin to win action happening and cyclone doesn't feel too bad these days if you scale enough area, uh, enough weapon range and have the right amount of damage. So this cyclone attempt here is a raider because I wanted to go really fast uh, as much movement speed as I could compared to my previous few characters which didn't really have any movement speed or forced me to leap um, or totem bros that sort of thing so I wanted to go absolutely fast and that's why I made a raider as opposed to a few other choices that I thought were good like an elementalist a berserker um, a champion, a pathfinder, a scion. There's a lot of good choices for Cyclone and for building around Voidforge, I think, at the moment, especially if you're trying to factor absolute endgame of Uber Elder into the encounters. Um, but for the most part, I think the maximum fast should be something like a raider or a pathfinder, and that's what I wanted to do. So it's a pretty basic um, raider setup, I would think. You just get a bunch of frenzies. We went the onslaught route on the tree, and the idea is to stack a fairly decent amount of movement speed uh, from all of that to then negate the negative effect of the cyclone itself uh, which does give you a negative movement speed attachment and that basically makes cyclone feel a lot nicer uh, to actually spin through mobs and the damage seems to be fairly uh, comfortable for this weapon with a raider setup and overall I'd say it is one of the hardest hitting cyclones I've played in recent memory um, as far as I can tell so it may actually be one of the most viable cyclones right now a void forge build but I haven't explored too many others recently I am still somewhat in the gearing process and uh, deciding a few key items for the build but I will show you the gear in just a few minutes uh, however this is the single target that I'm dealing uh, or rolling with for the time being in a red elder encounter so something like a tier 11 elder, but it is a red elder and I do have to do three phases on these goddamn guardians. We're somewhat tanky with all of our uh, evasion and dodge at the moment. Uh, decent amount of life and movement speed and the damage is good enough for these encounters at the moment. And I think this should be a cyclone that can take on just about all end game content. Not quite sure about Uber Elder because it does take a uh, special amount of flair for that. And a raider with um, cyclone may not be able to do it because cyclone notoriously not a great end game skill anymore since it is a pretty much pure definition of, me of uh, melee, sorry that just doesn't really exist anymore when you can do things like a blade flurry instead. 
So I will be trying to take it to the end game, but you can see that it is fairly useful having this amount of movement speed and um, damage to catch up to some of these guardians. And then just being able to juke Elder all day every day is actually pretty handy with the attack and movement speed. So this is the red Elder encounter that um, I managed to get to. And I, like I said, I think I still have some perfecting of the character to do, but it's looking like something about 1 million Shaper DPS, which is not at all too bad for a cycling character. Hopefully um, we figure out the last few gear slots because I'm really not sure if I should be using an Abyssus because I probably shouldn't be, but on the other hand, maybe I should be. And hopefully I'll have another video um, pertaining to the end game, full blown setup of the character. But for now, this is a demo of the Red Elder. It was an absolutely fast character for actual mapping so far. So that's been a beaut and I've loved playing it. Uh, it's just gonna be about figuring out the last few little items and the end game for him. So for the purpose of the character Raider Cyclone, gotta go fast. It's definitely been a success. And uh, just one last little thing, after I killed Elder here, he spawned another circle that almost killed me, so look out for that. In any case, let's get into the gear. I mostly want to go over the actual interaction of the sword and things to consider when building around it, but currently I'm level 87, it is a Raider, and the entire build is based around a Voidforge weapon. So as you can see, it has some physical damage, not very much though. Uh, your elemental damage can shock, which is somewhat relevant for trash clear, but otherwise you're not really gonna be shocking too many bosses anyway, unless you're a Scion Elementalist or pure Elementalist. And then again, 300% of weapon physical damage is extra damage of an element. So every single time you attack, you will be gaining a random element, um, fire, lightning, cold, uh, with each of your hits uh, based off of your um, weapon physical damage. So scaling your weapon physical damage is very important to then get lots of uh, elemental damage, which you then scale through things like um, elemental damage and um, with attacks and all that sort of stuff as well. And then large, uh, lastly, it says deal no non-elemental damage. So no physical, no chaos, nothing but elemental. So the idea is basically like a doom flirt. You stack some flat physical, you get some percent um, elemental damage to attacks if you can, which is a uh, you know pretty expensive stuff on steel rings, for example. But uh, you do your best. And then you build around um, elemental scaling purely and you try and get some penetration and all of that's happening. So that's why uh, triple penetration on a wise oak would be pretty damn handy. Getting uh, nodes like these over here for penetration is handy or just being an inquisitor, for example. But ultimately what I'm trying to do here is to just make use of elemental equilibrium. So the way this is going to function is every single time you hit um, if you have no other elemental damage, which I currently do not, so make sure you do not have any added fire, added um, cold, added lightning, anywhere on your gear or heralds or anything like that. So then you deal, the only um, elemental damage you deal is the random one based off of your weapon. So every time you hit, you have a one in three chance of hitting lightning damage, for example. If you hit with lightning damage, the other two are then going to be weak, which is cold and fire. You then have a one in, um, a two in three chance to hit with um, things that are going to help for the weakness of that. So that is cold and fire and a one in three chance of hitting with lightning again, which is going to be a reduction in damage. So overall, it should be a damage gain because you have a two in three chance of then hitting the good element that you want with your elemental equilibrium with your next hit, but a one in three chance to get a reduced amount of damage. Overall, that is a net positive, but it does create some um, spiky damage and some inconsistencies at time. So keep in mind when you're grabbing elemental equilibrium that that is going to be happening and the way that that works. It should be a net positive, but um, you can't use heralds with it. You can't use any other flat damage um, from gear, jewelry, whatever it is, uh, angers, wraths, all of that. So as an elementalist, if you are going to be building around heralds and that sort of thing, then you definitely can't have elemental equilibrium and you just go pure penetration instead, which is why it's a little bit more of an iffy situation, but possibly still worth it. So a lot of our penetration and uh, minus resist comes from EE over here, but you can still scale through other things like that and that. But currently I'm just going with that and uh, running extra frenzies and a bunch of damage from jewels. 
And the rest of the passive treat pretty straightforward. Get a bit of leech over here, a bit of uh, mana leech as well, and um, some life and movement speed and all of that, and potentially shove an abyssus in there. Now for cycling specifically, one of the perks of this type of build, a physical into elemental conversion, basically physical to elemental conversion type build is that you can use many sockets. So traditionally with a cyclone, you might run out of a few sockets, but since you can use a mellow fizz, an elemental damage, a damage on full life, an Ellie focus, you can just keep stacking 40, 50% multipliers to get quite a lot of cyclone damage that you previously couldn't, I don't, uh, I don't think. And uh, my current links are cyclone, mellow fizz, Ellie damage and tanks, damage on full life, uh, increased area and crit strikes. Increased area is probably my last link. So if you've only got a five link, that's probably what you'd run. And then I'm subbing in uh, Ellie focus over increased area for boss fights, because I'm not really gonna be um, shocking them too much anyway. So conch effect, I just wanna keep a bit of area, which is why I'm not currently doing it, but conch effect should uh, factor into the late stages of the build. Now you can run a law weave. It's very good with a sort of setup like this, but I tried my best to craft an elder armor that can get a lot of life and crit uh, instead, because I'm definitely gonna need life on my build if I wanna shove abyssus into it, as well as that quite a decent chunk of evasion. You can see, for example here though, that um, in my current setup, 830,000 shaper DPS with cyclone. And if we just chuck in um, a law weave instead of our armor, you do gain a decent chunk of damage. You also get the max resists uh, potentially up to 80, which is a good defensive boost against uh, plenty of content out there, but it's going to be a lot less life um, and no real defensive bonus of evasion from that armor. And I definitely want to have a decent little bit of uh, defense. So I think um, ultimately a really good elder chest is going to be what you're looking for, um, but it's gonna be expensive to craft and hard to get. So a lore weave is probably a baseline, and then maybe you can um, build into some, um, not necessarily devotos, you could use star conjure, uh, but abyssus is supposed to be my end goal because as you can see, an abyssus is going to be absolutely huge for this build since it gives melee physical um, crit multi and a bunch of flat fizz, which is then converted into the Ellie damage. You can see that we go from 830 tooltip to 1.3 million. So it's very worth trying to shove this into the build somehow and uh, lose some damage elsewhere and then gain some life if we need to, just because uh, it's going to be the single biggest piece of damage we can get for, all the, uh, for the build. Other gear choices include a Dark Ray Vector with plus one um, frenzies, gives quite a lot of damage as well. Once again, no life though, but it does give you a bunch of uh, dodge. So at the moment, just running some shitty boots that um, I was leveling with, but Dark Ray Vectors could happen. I doubt I could shove Dark Ray and Abyssus on at the same time, so that's gonna be kind of tough. And then the other interesting choice we have is a Duress's Salute. Uh, just gives you some movement speed and some weapon and unarmed effect um, for weapon and unarmed attack range effect for your cyclone, which is pretty important, but uh, ultimately you don't have to use this thing. It just does give some uh, good damage as well when on full life, which we are almost 100% at the time. So besides that, nothing too special about my gear, trying to get some flat fizz, trying to get some Ellie damage where I can. My belt was crafted for my Brutus Led Sprinkler character, which can serve for this one as well. And it is fairly insane for those purposes. And we do use Tomb Fist just for some uh, Intimidate action, which is 10% uh, extra damage. And I just chucked in some crappy jewels at the moment. Uh, Lion's Roar definitely still gives you a boost because it, all of your damage is based off your physical. So it's 25% more physical, which is then elemental. And of course, a Diamond Flask. So in the end, we're running something like um, 42 crit at the moment um, than diamond flask and at the moment i'm also running haste which is just um, good for some fast action at level you know 70 to 80 but i think i will drop haste eventually for an aspect of the cat or an aspect of the spider so keep um an eye on that one and then i'm currently also running a blasphemy assassin's mark just for uh, some extra crit and um, damage and Attached to that, we do have an Enlighten, so that you can actually have a bit of mana unreserved, so you can spin around and get things. Uh, if you spin too close to the enemy um, continuously, you will be running out of mana, so when you actually play Cyclone, it does pay off to you know, have longer spins on top of bosses and all of that, otherwise your mana leech will not keep up with it. And bear in mind, haste isn't that good, so the more mana you have unreserved, the easier it will be to spin with your character. 
I'd say currently that's all I need to mention for this character. I will um, hopefully have another video of him in pure endgame and uh, once I've finalized all of my choices to give you an example of what the endgame for this character should look like. Uh, for now though guys, that is uh, Voidforge and how I've chosen to build around it. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video and the presentation and I will see you next time.